This just showed up on Facebook Marketplace. The pedal steel guitar is number one on my instrument wish list. Daddy, what are you doing? You're filming this? I'm out. But they're hard to find, they're expensive, and everybody tells me that they're very difficult to learn to play. So, backwards. I'm going to try to learn a song and play live in one week, nine days. Is this going to be a disaster? I don't know, but I'm gonna give it a try. We have a Christmas Eve service at my church. Seems like as good a time as any to give it a go. At our Christmas Eve service, we are going to have handbells. The only way I think this will work is if I take one of their arrangements and build a track around it. I need to make this arrangement work for a band. I have gone in note by note and put this bell part in. I've also added a little drum track. What do you think of those mallet drums, by the way? I have pulled up a piano. That look familiar? Post Felt. By the way, Post Felt, Sample Library Review nominee for Piano of the Year. Works in the free contact player. Link below. G. I have two main goals with this steel guitar. One, to be great. I wanna be the old man, the next 25, 30 years, sitting behind that thing, just killing it. My second goal, which I try to achieve with every instrument that I buy that's new, what is that one simple part that I can learn to play quickly so I can put it on a recording, or in this case, play it in front of people? This is an oversimplification, but there are three things I've gotta get right. One is timing. I think I should be able to do that all right. Number two is tone. A lot of resources, I think I can figure that out. But three is pitch. And with a bar sliding around the strings and a 10 strings and pedals, that's what I'm most scared of. managed to break a string right here yes can I help you I'm telling everyone that I broke a string what do you think about that are you mad I'm not happy what do I need to do play without the string that's actually a pretty good solution however Mr. Amazon will be delivering the type of strings that I was recommended to get but right now I'm just gonna play without it can you please play with me <laughs> What do you want to play? Chippy animals. Stuffed animals? With stuffed animals. Everybody out there is hearing that. You sure you don't want to say, Vroom, play football. I'm Dak Prescott. Here we go! I want to play with stuffed animals. What am I going to do? Hey, am I going to be able to learn this by Christmas Eve? You need to, you need to play it at Christmas Eve. That's the plan. You think I'm going to get there? No. Yes, yes. You do? Uh, but we have to play right now. Yeah. But I have to practice. No, but we have to play. When I bought the steel, Shane Frame, who kind of deals pedal steels in the area, here's his message to me. I consulted with a good friend of mine, Ricky Davis, down south of Austin, who's a showbud expert. Uh, he actually rebuilt the Lloyd Green uh, guitar that's in the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame. So your guitar is a 1977 showbud Pro One model or model 6139 even though yours doesn't have the pro one logo on it that's still what they called it uh the cool thing about it is it has what's called a double double changer and a certain bracket system on it that was designed by paul franklin senior for only that year in 1977. ricky said it's the best changer show bud had after what they call the single single changer also, it was the last year of, of the round crossbars and curved knee levers and what they would consider non-breakable parts underneath. I know after that year model or so, they started making the uh, parts out of hot metal. And we experienced a lot of guitars 78 and after uh, has a lot of breakage. But those are some of the details on your guitar. 
hope that helps out. The concept of the pedal steel is not totally new to me because I do have this lap steel with benders. Maybe you saw the video I said, is the lap steel with benders better than a pedal steel guitar? And many of you took great offense to that. This is the minor leagues compared to a steel guitar, but working with pitch, I've got a little practice and I have an understanding of some of the math involved. I found that the finger picks are very cumbersome and are gonna take some getting used to. And I will do this, but not this week. I have these long fingernails that I use for guitar. I've thought about cutting them a thousand times, but I just use them all the time. The majority of players will do the first two fingers and not three. So I'm used to using this third finger. I find myself using it when I play, but I also am finding myself playing too many notes. Finger picking a guitar, you can get things rolling. With this setup, it seems to be better to be more precise, to be more thoughtful about your grips, and to not overdo it with the sound. Just be purposeful. That's what I'm telling myself. The pedal steel is now up at my church and it's gonna stay here probably until Sunday because taking this back and forth is not fun. When you start learning this instrument, a few things are going to be obviously difficult. Getting this to work on pitch, getting my left foot to time up with the swell on my right foot, but even bigger than that is getting this thing in tune. I tend to get tired head and my eyes glaze over. When people start talking about any type of tuning that is different from what I get when I plug my guitar into the pedal and it tells me what letter it is and I adjust it until it's right. With a piano, you can't simply put a tuner up and tune it right to the perfect frequency. The instrument has to be in tune with itself and what that means is some notes are gonna be a little bit sharp, some might be a little bit flat. When I went to see my friend Shane, he helped me with this. When I take my guitar and I tune it, this is tuned to E9, so basically the E is the root note. And when I get that E exactly where E is supposed to be, and the B is gonna be on, again, I can't even, the third, G sharp, the F sharp, they're not exactly on pitch. And in this case, like say the sixth string, is 11 cents flat. Fourth string is two cents sharp. What it really comes down to is what do my ears say? When I play the notes, does it sound like I'm in tune or does it not sound like I'm in tune? And of course, I'm bending strings. But it's stretching these strings and they're eventually gonna knock out of tune and I'm gonna have to tune them again. One of the big gripes apparently with pedal steel guitars is that they are often out of tune and I can't stand being out of tune. So I know that I've got to figure this part of it out. When I put the bar where I think the bar needs to go, it's in tune. And if it's out of tune, it's because the bar is not in the right place, not because the strings are out of tune. I have a feeling this is gonna be a source of frustration for me and probably you if you start playing this instrument. How about we have a discussion about amplification? At home, I have a Kemper, and that's how I get my amp sound. For live, we have the Line 6 Helix. I am by no means an expert on this thing. What I do know is the stock sounds are not good. They're not gonna get you where you wanna go, but there are tons of resources. For instance, I use this sound called Brad's Patch from a company called Worship Tutorials. I don't think they make you sign anything that says you have to play these sounds in church if that's not your thing. He's dialed it in in a way that I like. He's got the reverbs and delays that I would go to and the amp sounds that I like. In fact, I was practicing the old rubber bridge guitar. I plan on playing this tomorrow night. I've also possibly sampled something involving this that will be coming your way soon, so pay attention some funky lighting. We've got red and green for Christmas, so surprisingly, you will see a lot of PV amps used for the steel guitar. They have a lot of headroom, and you want a nice, clean amp sound. You don't want a lot of breakup, typically. So it's either the PV amp or a Fender Twin seems to be what a lot of people recommend. On the Helix, it's called the US Double. Twin Double. Source for 
Helix and Kemper Information is the Tone Junkie. I believe his name is JW. I reached out and asked him what to get, and he said, Twin Reverb or Dual Showman or something like that, pretty much anything scooped and American should work really well. Fun fact, this is pretty interesting. Most Fender amps were designed and tested for Hawaiian steel players. Leo loved that music and it was very popular. The Tele Bridge Broadcaster pickup is actually an overwound lap steel pickup. Who knew? I am sure that amps are better, but these boxes are magical, especially when I'm switching back between multiple inputs. I've got my pedal steel, I have a mandolin that I'll play sometimes, I have my regular acoustic guitar, the rubber bridge, and my telly, and my Epiphone, and it doesn't make any sound except what goes to the PA and then into my ears. Pedal steel players also use the same type of seat. It's the right height. You open up, you can put stuff inside it. I don't have that, so I'm using the drum stool. So it's Saturday afternoon. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I can't play this anymore, and I've kind of found my lane. I have my C right here. I've got a lot of delay and reverb. There's a little bite to the sound. I still don't know what I want as far as tone, but this is gonna work for tomorrow. Silent night, holy night, I got my G. F. And then I'm doing this a lot where I go from my F to my G, and I push down pedals one and two. And that is lifting me back up to the C. From the C, I can go my one chord, push down pedals A and B, the first two pedals, go up two frets. So I have my one, four, and five, right? And sometimes when I'm feeling crazy, I'll take this G and try to get up there, F. And then there's one point where I have my minor play my C major and hit the, and hit the A pedal. Or I can lift my G to the two minor, which is A minor in G, and that's gonna work as my six chord for C. Which to me sounds better. It always seems to sound good when there's no track playing, but as soon as I have any kind of tonal reference, oh, it's just out of tune a lot. But I think it's gonna work. It is now January 1st, 2024. A week has passed. I didn't think about this video after Christmas Eve. We went out of town, now we're back, and I'm watching it. I'm not sure how to end this video, so I think what I'll do is, although it will be awkward, we're just gonna sit and watch me play Silent Night. There's some issues with the recording when the band was playing, so really there's this section at the end where it's just me and the piano. And uh, yeah, here it is. That is it. I practiced for nine days to do that. And that's basically all I did. I simplified this part way down. I've learned over the years that when I play a new instrument, I never play as good as I practice. I hopefully get about 70%. On the night of, I think I would have given myself a C minus, but listening today, I think I'd give myself a solid B. Those poor performances on day one through three, that was reality. That's not me hamming it up for the camera. But most of all, I'm thankful for this silly channel because there's no way I'm doing this unless I have this idea to make a YouTube video at the end of it. I probably would have given up a long time ago and it would have taken me months to get where I got in just about nine days. Music is music. 
strings are strings. Yes, this is a much different approach and it is more time consuming to learn, but hey, effort and time, you'll get there and I'll get there.